Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested XKCD what if video. Specifically, what if everyone jumped at once? That would involve a lot of very careful planning and coordination just to pull off. Don't think it would do much, but not sure, and I'm not sure why. Maybe some kind of charity event or something, but shouldn't affect the Earth very much. Let's see how wrong I am. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fols. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. See what this is all about. From Thomas and many other people who all asked, what would happen if everyone on Earth stood as close to each other as they could, jumped, and landed on the ground at the same instant? Wow. Okay, so... We're trying to get a whole bunch of people in one spot. A lot of people are going to die. And not from the effects of the jump, but just trying to get that many people into one spot like that. Throughout my training as a nuclear engineer in emergency response, one of the first things I learned was ordering an evacuation is not always the conservative option. Because there's going to be... Panic, fear, especially when someone hears the word nuclear power plant, people are afraid of those because they don't understand how that works. And if there's an evacuation due to one of those, people are going to panic. Or an evacuation due to anything, really. People are going to die probably in a car accident or whatever means of travel. The evacuation th zones that I've had experiences working with were in towns and cities. This would be taken to the logical extreme of taking every person on Earth and placing them in one location. Now, even if we take into account that fear is not a motivator, but excitement about doing this jump, there's still just going to be that many logistical issues with coordinating travel and not everyone's going to get there by car, but people are going to need some sort of vehicular transport to take part of the way. On the subject of car accidents. Within the U.S. anyway, according to Depart the Department of Transportation, there's about one death per 100 million miles traveled. So let's just go out on a limb and say on average people are going to be traveling a thousand miles to this one spot, which is, which I know is an underestimate, but just to give a sense of scale, for 8 billion people, that figures out to 80,000 deaths. And this is, but this assumes normal travel, this, these congested amount of lanes and any other method of transit. I went with cars just because that's the deadliest form of travel. 80,000 casualties of just getting there. And that's just getting there, not, not going back home after the fact. You can see why this would be a horrific idea, just getting people in the same spot. This is one of the most popular questions submitted to What If. It's been examined before, including by a science blogs post and a straight dope article. They cover the physics pretty well. However, they don't tell the whole story. All right. At the start of the scenario, the entirety of Earth's population has been magically transported together into one place. So the, so the wizardry saved well over 80,000 lives at this point. So I'm guessing we should only attempt this when we have magical powers. This crowd takes up an area the size of Rhode Island. In fact, let's assume they, I mean <laughs> we, are actually in Rhode Island. At the stroke of wow. noon, everyone jumps. As discussed elsewhere, this jump doesn't really affect the planet. Earth outweighs us by a factor of over 10 trillion. On average, we humans can vertically jump maybe half a meter, and that's when we're not shoulder to shoulder in the middle of a crowd. Even if everyone did jump that high and the ground were rigid and responded instantly, the Earth would still only be pushed down by less than an atom's width. The other thing is trying to get everyone to be in step. Man, that would be very difficult. I remember commenting on a lot of these those videos about, hey, let's set off all nuclear weapons at once. Well, the problem is you set off one, it could just it'll just destroy the ones next to it. You one contrary to popular belief and a lot of video game mechanics is detonating one nuke as in causing it to fission or induce fusion depending on what type of bomb it is would cause the other bombs to explode and I mean explode using a nuclear reaction not just as a result of the initial explosion but to be kind of chained explosions. That's not really the case. Bombs are designed in such a way to only explode when it needs to and when it is armed and when it is ready. So you'd have to arm them and detonate them in such a way 
so they would not actually engulf the other ones if you're going to maximize your destructive power. That being said, I also don't recommend nuclear disarmament being throw a bunch of nukes in a pile and just set one off. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not the most environmentally friendly way to pull that off, though I'm sure some people have thought of that. So if you thought that was challenging with just hundreds to thousands of devices, here we're talking about billions of people. This is far enough away, even the distance over Rhode Island, that even if people could happen to respond immediately, the difference in the amount of time it takes from light to travel from one side of Rhode Island to the other would be would have a noticeable effect on the order of microseconds. This part's pretty hard to do as well. Next, everyone falls back to the ground. Technically, this delivers a lot of energy into the Earth, but it's spread out over a large enough area yeah. that it doesn't do much more than leave footprints in a lot of gardens. A slight <laughs> pulse of pressure spreads through the North American continental crust and dissipates with little effect beyond moving the needle of a few local seismometers. Yeah, if everyone jumped, say, 0.3 meters simultaneously with a total mass of about 5 times 10 to the 11th kilograms, We'll get you something like 1.5 trillion joules, but joules are tiny, so we're talking around a four on the Richter scale. So enough for people to feel, although they'd probably feel the effects of their own jump more than anything else. The sound of 12 billion feet hitting the ground does create a loud, drawn-out roar which lasts many seconds. Eventually, the air grows quiet. Seconds pass. Everyone looks around. There are a lot of uncomfortable glances. Someone coughs. A cell phone comes out of a pocket. Oh, is he going to say this starts, a, this starts a pandemic? Okay. Within seconds, the rest of the world's 7 billion phones follow. All of them, even those compatible with the region's towers, are displaying some version of no signal. The cell networks have all collapsed under the unprecedented load. Outside wow. Rhode Island, abandoned machinery begins grinding to a halt. Airplanes drift through the skies on autopilot trajectories. Food starts burning on abandoned kitchen stove. Oh, just because you teleported everyone into one spot, everything... Okay, and now we're going to get in and now we're getting into the scenario of what if everyone disappeared? How long would it take for the lights to burn out? I'll pin that one down in the in a comment below. Soccer balls complete their trajectories into now vacant goals, and empty playground swings gradually drift to a halt. Back in Rhode Island, people, many people, begin to wonder, how do we get everyone home? The TF Green Airport in Warwick, Rhode yeah. Island handles a few thousand passengers a day. I just flew out of there. They have the nicest bathrooms of any airport I've ever seen. Very yeah, that's just it. Who's, who's gonna drive everyone out and fly everyone home? And, and this is where, this is where all the deaths are gonna occur. So. You need to have the wizard, the wizard to get people back. <laughs> Very impressive. This is not part of the recording. Assuming they got things organized, <laughs> including sending out scouting missions to retrieve fuel, they could run at 500% capacity for 100 years without making a dent in the crowd. The addition of all the nearby airports doesn't change the equation no. much, nor does the region's light rail system. Crowds climb on board container ships in the deep water port of Providence, but stocking sufficient food and water for a long sea voyage proves a challenge. Wow. Rhode Island's million cars are commandeered. Moments later, I-95, I-195, and I-295 become the sites of the largest traffic jams in the history of the planet. Most of the cars are blocked by the crowds, but a lucky few get out and begin wandering the abyss. And this is basically the worst evacuation scenario now, because everyone has to evacuate where we're at. I had a feeling what I said earlier in the video was going to have a point, so here we are. I'm glad he's I'm glad he's covering this. This is something that a lot of people don't realize about emergency response, because this would certainly be an emergency. And in road network. Some make it past New York or Boston before running out of fuel. Since the electricity is probably not on at this point, rather than finding a working gas pump, it's easier to just abandon the car and get in a new one. After all, who can stop you? All the cops are in Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're assuming everyone knows how to commandeer a car. Well, people probably figure it out. Yeah, the, the infrastructure is not being manned at, at this point, so any little bit of grid instability event, and most power plants do require operator action, the grid requires operator action, not all the time, it, uh, but, certain, but odds are by the time we get to the point where people have left Rhode Island, Something happened, some some weather phenomena probably caused some sort of disruption, and even relatively minor things do require grid operators. People forget, even with automated energy saver smart grid technology, 
still need operators. AI has not taken away the job of grid operators or power plant operators yet. And especially in the case of nuclear power plants, I don't see that happening anytime in the near future. Just because not a whole lot of people trust nuclear power plants to be, to be manned by AI, at least in terms of decision making. The closest I see AI in nuclear power plants would be in providing input and recommendations, but a person, and by a person I mean a licensed senior reactor operator, is going to be the decision maker because they have the expertise and the training. And it's a lot. I've been through that program. It was well over two years after getting my nuclear engineering degree. The edge of the crowd spreads outward into southern Massachusetts and Connecticut. Any two people who meet are unlikely to have a language in common, yeah. and almost nobody knows the area. Even if people cooperate, everyone is hungry and- Yeah, because what? Population of Rhode Island's about a million, so divide that through by eight billion, you have a one in eight million chance that someone knows where they are. Wow. Thirsty. Grocery stores are immediately emptied and woefully insufficient. Fresh water is hard to come by, and there's no efficient system for distributing it. Sanitation is a disaster, and healthcare infrastructure non existent. Yeah. Within weeks, Rhode Island is a graveyard of billions, including most of the people who submitted this question, probably you and me too. Yeah, odd, odds are. I wonder how many people submitted this question. <laughs> The survivors spread out over the face of the world and struggle to build a new civilization atop the ruins of the old. Our species staggers on, but our population has been greatly reduced. And, most importantly, the Earth's rotation and orbit are completely unaffected. So this had a far more devastating impact with the use of magic, and the problem was it was one-way magic. Whereas if everyone, you know, coordinated and knew how to get there, then presumably with the consequences would have been less. Though, actually, maybe not. The goal is to still get 8 billion people there, not 6 billion or 7 billion. Say, leave, leave a billion behind to manage all the critical infrastructure. <laughs> then everyone would get there, but they still, you'd still run into the same issue. So, all right. I stand corrected on this whole assessment. Turns out it's way worse than I initially thought. That's, that's fascinating. So you have to have two-way magic. Lesson learned. It spins along exactly as it did before our species-wide jump. Note to future civilizations. Let's not try that again. I like this. They completely turned what would, what would be a pretty simple physics problem that I'm sure people have seen a variant of it on some physics test in high school where you get like, where they give you a few rough assumptions and then just kind of put it on there for grins. But the tragic blend of putting some realism into the fantasy of this scenario, and this is what this channel does best. <laughs> that was a great one, the twist ending, and crazy how I underestimate how bad this would be. Still a very fun video. Thanks again for the recommendation, and thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.